So forgive me for this kind of crappy intro to this video. I actually recorded an intro and then I somehow managed to delete it. And I did not have the time to make a new one, so you're stuck with this one. Today's video is going to be about session playing. I'm not going to get into how to actually go to a session and find out the tunes. I made a nice blog post about that that you can read. And there's also a video by Tiffany Shaver, which is really good, so check that one out. What you're gonna learn today are some patterns and how to start off doing chord progressions and how to change from one chord to the next. If you practice this enough, you'll get really good at it and you'll eventually be able to easily play along in a session by just playing the chords. Okay, have fun with the video. The one thing you can always do is play a bass note. In the case of cockles and muscles that we're using to accompany something, that would just be a C and a G, depending on where in the song you are. So you can always play just that bass note and do nothing else. And the bass note would go on the first beat of the bar because it's always good to support that first beat. So in this example, I'm using the C and the G. This is, these are gonna be chords later on, but we're starting with just the bass. That's usually the first thing I start with when I play in a session. Now, then you could also fill up those other two beats. And the easiest way to do this is to just play an octave above what your left hand is doing. So then you'd be doing this. One, two, three. Remember the first beat is your left hand, the second and third beat are your right hand. And in order to emphasize this first beat feeling, you would actually kind of play the left hand a bit louder and the right hand a bit less loud. So it would be maybe play along, one, two, three, left, right, right, left, right, right, G, right, right, left, right, back to C. that you can use to make this even more complicated one of the things you could do is play a fifth and in this case I would play it in the left hand the fifth is basically the distance of five strings so if I have a C that would be one then two three four five I would get on a G with my thumb and on the harp this is played with a third finger and a thumb so I'll show you this is how it would look your second finger would be kind of hanging there inside and you would play them inside your hand. So we start again, left hand plays the fifth, right hand just plays the C. One, two, three, C. G, notice how you have a cross. more like an ending. Now of course you might want to do something with your right hand more than that you were doing just the one note. You could also play a fifth in the right hand. It sounds a little bit strange maybe but for the exercise it's actually a good thing to do. Um, I'm going back to just one note in the bass and the right hand plays the fifth. So you do one, two, three. what you can do is a basic chord and a basic chord is always three fingers with one string in between each finger so a C then not skip one string go to an E skip one string and go to a G 
And this is a really nice cookie cutter. You can actually use this just the way the hand is uh, positioned. You can use this on any string that you want and you would always have a chord. Now, the name of the chord is always named after the lowest string when you have this cookie cutter. So basically, this is a C chord. And if you want to do a G chord, then you put your third finger on G and skip one string and skip one string. And that would be a G chord. You could do that with the left hand that you're already playing. So it would sound something like this. chord to that G chord is actually quite a big skip so you would have to change your whole hand around on the harp it's an easy thing to do because you have this cookie cutter that always feels the same so that makes it a lot easier but still it is kind of a big step you every time you're gonna have to hit that right G so one of the things you could do is instead of skipping all the way up here is to see if there is a way that you can make this G chord and not change your hand position all that much. So if you look at the chords that you're playing, you have a C chord, which is C, E, G, and then you have a G chord, which is G, B, and D. They have one note in common. You can already see it because it's this G. If I, my thumb plays it the first time and my third finger plays it the second time if I skip so what I can do is just keep that G where it is, the thumb, and instead try to find a way to make a G chord with the thumb on the G. Now, this is not gonna work. That is not easy to play. So I would have to actually find a way to place these notes, the B and the D, lower than my thumb. And if, as you can see, it's quite easy to find it on the harp because they're actually just one place lower than you already are. So this is a C chord, C, E and G. And this is a G chord, B, D, G. And this is what you call an inversion. We'll get to that more when we do more theory, but this is an inversion of G. Basically, it's the same chord, it's just in a different position. So C, E, G. So first, when you're starting out, and this is totally new to you, first practice just doing this, and then go to the G chord, C chord, and then go to the G chord. You could actually do this with both hands, even though I would probably not play it that low on the harp, because it sounds a bit muddy, but it's a good practice to be able to do this easily. So. Start on a C with your bass note C and you play the left hand and twice the C chord. You repeat this. Then we're going to do G and for the G chord, we're gonna go here. So it's actually really nice. And you can now see a relationship when you have your left hand on the G. You see G, B, D, that is the G chord. And your thumb is also on the G. So let's do this now. The same sort of rhythm that we were doing before but with the newfound G chord here. So one, two, three, C. Going to G. C. Going to G. And again, C. Going to G. this position you can actually also play your notes maybe differently um, you can actually start doing a rhythm on your right hand now since we're stuck with the one two three of the cockles and muscles 
it might get a little bit more complicated, but instead of doing the same, you could also do the lowest and the top strings together. So you would get left, third finger, second and first finger together. So it'd be one, two, three. Let's try that. One, two, ah. hand separately but we are stuck in that 3-4 rhythm so we can't do one two three because then we'd be stuck on the fourth with the thumb so I would suggest you would do something like one two and three one two and three so you actually make like a little bit of faster notes in the middle just so you can keep to that one two three feeling Let's practice that from C to G and repeat that a few times. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, go to G. One, two, and three. One, two, C. Two, and three. One, two, and three. G. C. G. start you off by playing this tune and naming the chords that we're playing. You can play along with any of the patterns that I just showed you in the video. It starts with the C bass. One, two, three, one, two, C. you a tune. I haven't recorded it yet so if you have any suggestions put it below in the comments and in the meantime tell me what's happening in your life. 